Hello everybody, my name is Fariba and this is my channel, The Medieval Reader. So today I would like to talk about two plays that I recently finished by Marie Vaux, whom I mentioned a couple weeks ago when I did my review on his play, A Game of Love and Chance, in French, Le Jeu de l'Amour et du Hasard. Um, I've decided that, that I am going to do reviews for the fiction that I read, especially because they're French works that I want to encourage other people to read. So if I spoil them, then people are not going to feel encouraged to read them. Uh, so I will be doing reviews for that. And of course, I will be doing reviews for the nonfiction that I read. Um, I won't worry about spoilers because it's nonfiction. So what am I spoiling? So a little bit of a background about Marivaux. Marivaux was born in the late 17th century and died in the mid 18th century, so he's considered an 18th century poet. He began as a playwright for the Comédie Française, which was the French version of the Commedia dell'arte. So in Italy, the Commedia dell'arte was a comedy troupe, and there was a group of characters that would play different roles in different plays. So Arlequin or Arlequino was already a clown in the Commedia dell'arte and Marivaux adopted this character for his own plays that he put on for the Comédie Française. The Commedia dell'arte was patroned by Catherine of Medici and the Italians came to France and they were putting on plays uh, probably near the Italian border but because they didn't know French, they didn't really have a great reception. And so the Comédie Française was essentially the French version, and it was begun by Louis XIV. Now, Marivaux wrote over 40 plays. He wrote something like 50 plays. And he wrote essays, and he wrote novels. These plays, these comedies, were slapstick comedies. So Arlequin, who plays different roles in each of the different plays, carried a baton or a baguette, baton, baguette. It's basically a stick that he beats his valet with whenever he's upset. And so the, the humor is in the violence, uh, which was a little bit off-putting when I first read, um, when I first encountered Arlequin's behavior. But then I basically loosened up. I mean, I tend to have a pretty weird sense of humor as it is, so this wasn't an issue. What's nice about Marivaux's plays is that even though you have different characters, because they play different roles, so they have the same names, but they play different roles, the beginning of one play does not spoil the ending of the other. So when I talk about the two plays in this collection, Double Inconstancy and Harlequin Polished by Love, you don't have to worry that I'm spoiling the ending of A Game of Love and Chance. So you can read these plays in any order you want, and they're very short, one or two act plays. The characters in the Comédie Française, as in the Comédie de l'Arte, are all caricatures, they're archetypal, and all of these plays influenced the Punch and Judy slapstick comedies of the 20th century. So moving on, let me talk about each of these two plays. So Double Inconstancy, you have Sylvia, who is in love with Arlequin, but there's a prince who wants to marry Sylvia, but she just refuses. She's not interested in his wealth. She's not interested in his power. She just wants to be with Arlequin. And the same thing goes for Arlequin. He's not interested at all in any of the favors the prince has promised him in return for Arlequin giving the prince Sylvia. He's not interested in any of that. He, in fact, ridicules the nobility. He thinks that the nobles are just full of themselves, that in, in many ways, Arlequin is exposing the problems in the nobility in the 18th century. And so what happens is that um, the prince and his friend, they decide they're going to deceive Arlequin and Sylvia, and the whole play is about whether they are successful. What I think is so clever is how it's both a satire on society in the 18th century, but also a look at the motives behind love and, again, what brings people together. So I really 
really enjoyed this play. It wasn't my favorite. My favorite was actually the one I'm going to talk about next, which is Harlequin Poli par Amour, or Harlequin, Harlequin Polished by Love. That's a one-act play, and it's a magical play. It's one of his mag. It's one of Marivaux's magical um, plays. So you have a fairy who kidnaps Arlequin, who's sleeping under a tree. She kidnaps him because she wants to force him to love her. He wakes up, and he's so stupid. Arlequin is always this really stupid character. He is so stupid that all he asks for is food. He doesn't worry about where he is. He's just like, I'm hungry, I want to eat. She tries to seduce him. He's not interested at all. Um... The fairy is also betrothed to Merlin, so she's supposed to be marrying Merlin, and her servant, Trivelin, is telling her, is reminding her that she's not going to be able to get away with this. She can't just seduce Arlequin because Merlin's going to be upset. Arlequin meets Sylvia and they fall in love, and so the fairy is really upset, and so she tries to destroy their relationship. And the whole story is about whether or not she's successful. It's really wonderful. There's goblins, there's a magical ring, there's, of course, Arlequin's stick. He is the most ridiculous and the funniest in this play, so I would recommend Harlequin Polished by Love. And I will link below an English translation of a collection of Marivaux's plays if you are interested in trying some of his plays in English. they It should be a good translation. I haven't read it myself, but it should be a good translation because it's done by a language scholar. So anyway, these are two plays that I just finished. I really like them. I recommend them, particularly the last one. Now, I will not be able to film for the rest of the week and through the weekend because I'm going to be out of town, so I'm going to just tell you what I'm reading. I have, I'm continuing Notre Dame de Paris by Victor Hugo. I hope to get a lot more done over the weekend. I'm also reading Tuck Everlasting by Natalie Babbitt. It's a book that I should have read when I was in second grade, but I just didn't read it. And I watched the film and I loved it, so it's a children's book. It deals with questions about immortality and whether immortality is a good thing. So I really look forward to reading this. It should take like a couple hours at max. I'm also reading a poem by François Villon, who was a 15th century poet and a criminal. He actually murdered somebody and I think he was a thief and stole some stuff, but he was also a really accomplished poet and um, was patroned by a prince, I believe. I will say more once I finish his testament, but he wrote his own life in verse, and his testament is what I hope to read this weekend. And finally, I am reading an extremely rare book that nobody on YouTube will have heard of. It's Gerbert, and it's translated by Bernard Guido. Uh, Guido. So Gerbert is the sequel to another story, and it is one of the 13th century epics in the William of Orange cycle. So nobody will have heard of this. I was browsing the research library looking for really rare medieval texts, and I found this, and it's been translated into modern French, and so far it's really good. Very violent, so people are stabbed to death and then dismembered. It is very violent. It's a feud between two families, but I'm really enjoying it. And uh, this is an extremely rare book. So I hope to also get through a lot of this this weekend. So those are what I'm reading. Yeah, so tell me what you are reading. And um, I will be making another video probably beginning of next week as I will be out of town. Um, so yeah, that's all I have today. Thank you. Bye now.